Hey, hey friends, it's Corey from Hey Let's Make Stuff. In today's video, we are talking trends. Specifically, we are talking trends for the 2024 holiday season. And this is for all of you who have an Etsy shop, or maybe you're doing craft fairs, or maybe you're just looking for some trendier gift ideas for somebody you love. Trends are basically something that is really popular right now that may not be as popular in the future. And the key here is to not rely on trends. So you don't want to overhaul your entire shop or your entire life based on trends. You want to make sure you have those products that have historically sold really well, and then you want to sprinkle trends in there. And if you can find a trend that works really well in your particular niche, there is a good chance you will see success with that product. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing just a bunch of different trends that I have been seeing. These come from doing a lot of research on Etsy in particular, some things that I saw at Printing United when I was there in Vegas in September, as well as just things I'm seeing in the retail space when I go shopping. I'm going to be sharing a bunch of trends in this video, but if I miss something, go ahead and leave it down in the comments because I'm very curious what you guys are all seeing trending as well. This video will be in two sections. The first section is all about trending themes. Themes. So these are different themes I have seen trending in all of the different places I've been looking. The second is going to be trending crafts. So this is basically how you're going to make the trending themes. And you can combine the two. Obviously, you can use one or the other. It really depends on your own products, your own niche, and what you want to do this holiday season. For all of these ideas, I am going to be sharing photos here, but if you want a full list with links, I will link to the blog post for this video down in the description. And there I have basically everything I talk about in this video linked, so you can check it out yourself. The first thing that I have seen trending basically all year is ghosts. And yes, it's just about Halloween, so it makes sense for ghosts to be trending now, but they have been trending all year. And I'm already seeing ghosts with Christmas content. So I'm not sure why these little retro ghosts are everywhere. They are very cute. But if you can combine ghosts with basically anything else on this list, there's a good chance you might have a hit on your hands. Following right on the heels of ghosts are mushrooms. So you may have noticed in a lot of home decor, there are so many mushrooms. This sort of natural feel has been really popular the last few years and mushrooms hit it really big this year. I even found mushroom ghosts. So this goes to show you that you can combine just about anything and have a hit product. Third, we have cats. Cats have been trending a lot more this year than dogs. I am personally a dog person, but all of you cat people, this is your time to shine. I've also seen cat ghosts. So if you wanna combine ghosts with cats, there are plenty of ways to do that. And then sort of following the ghost trend, we also have the witchy, magic, celestial, fantasy sort of category. This is kind of a broad category, but it's basically stuff that includes stars and magic and the heavens and astrology and these sorts of things. It's been trendy for a few years, but it doesn't seem to be slowing down. And I think some of it is due to the rise of the romanticy genre of books. So romanticy is a portmanteau of the word romance and fantasy sort of smashed together. And it is a hugely popular book genre right now. And people want that sort of fantasy feel in some of the products that they're buying. And then next up is hyper local. So if you live in a community and it's a strong community and people love your community, there is a good chance that you can add things that are particular to your community to your shop and they will really resonate with your customers. This tends to work better at local craft fairs, markets, those sorts of things than it does on Etsy, unless you live in a really big city. So New York, Chicago, LA, that stuff might do really well on Etsy. So think about your neighborhood name, your town name, street names, zip codes, all of these things can really create that sort of hyper local loyalty. And then next up, we have the retro aesthetic. So for a few years now, the retro aesthetic really has been grounded in the 70s. But in the last year or two, we were starting to see that move into the 80s and 90s. So think of things like Reading Rainbow, Sesame Street, Saved by the Bell, The Power Rangers. These are sort of pop culture moments that we had in the 80s and 90s are really, really popular right now. You can also think about the tech from back then. So boom boxes and Game Boys and cassettes and those sorts of things also really trendy. And then of course, there is the fashion from those decades. So whether it's scrunchies or hair claw clips, those sorts of things, maybe something that you could make yourself that you could decorate that would be really popular with this younger demographic. From that retro aesthetic, we're going to move into friendship gifts. There has been a strong rise in women gifting things to their besties in the last few years. And I do think that this is part of that 80s and 90s aesthetic, right? All of the things we had as kids that we love to give to each other are sort of trending for adults now. 
Taylor Swift has thousands, millions of women exchanging friendship bracelets, for example. I've also seen a lot of necklaces, bracelets, stickers that sort of have that heart broken into two pieces. So your bestie gets one and you get the other and you are always connected. I've also seen friendship gifts that don't rely on that 80s or 90s aesthetic. Things like some very, very funny friendship candles, some artwork, if, especially if you have a long distance friendship. I will go ahead and link all of those in the blog post for you to check out. Moving on, let's talk about apparel a little bit. So in the last few years, we've had a lot of really colorful apparel, but this year it's all about neutrals. So when I was at Printing United this year, all of the different apparel booths had just this huge range of neutral colors. So we had everything from white to black, every shade of tan to brown in between, and very little brightly colored apparel. These neutral colors can be combined with some of the crafts I'm going to talk about here in a little bit. And then in addition to those neutral colors, we have boxy silhouettes, especially when it comes to shirts. Shirts are being made with heavier fabrics that don't drape quite like they used to. So Bella Canvas has a new heavyweight line and it's very popular. It's just giving that more structured look instead of the draping look that has been really popular the last few years. Making shirts that have these boxier silhouettes are definitely going to appeal to a younger crowd. Next up, I have two Christmas specific ideas for you. The first is Kitchmas. So this is basically combining kitsch and Christmas to create a new word. And this is basically sort of all the kitschy stuff that was really popular in the 50s. It really invokes a sense of nostalgia in a lot of people. And when you're thinking about this idea, I want you to think kind of tacky. So think about those light up ceramic Christmas trees, tinsel trees, vintage illustrations, retro ornaments. In particular, I think movies like Rudolph, you know, the old Rankin and Bass production, those things are going to be really popular for the next year or two as everybody kind of globs onto this sort of kitschmas idea. And then we have Pinkmas, which is basically Pink Christmas. And yes, there is going to be some overlap with Kitchmas with Pinkmas. And then I'm also going to talk about this hyper girly aesthetic that's really popular right now. So basically this is Christmas, but make it pink. Think a full pink Christmas tree, pink decorations, pink stockings, basically pink overload. This is going to be really popular. So if you have the opportunity to add some pink Christmas decor to your lineup, I think it's gonna do really well. And then I mentioned that hyper girly aesthetic, which is just basically girly stuff like in overtime. So of course we are talking the color pink. We're also talking a lot of hand tied bows, both in your hair, as well as on maybe your Christmas tree. We're talking cherries, strawberries, disco balls, glitter. Did I mention the color pink? It's sort of obnoxiously girly, but in all the best ways. And then my final trending theme is going to be another couple of words slammed together, kidulting. So this is kid and adulting slammed together. And it's basically when adults, especially millennials, want to get back to their childhood roots by doing childhood crafts. This is an opportunity to sell really fun craft kits so that adults can actually do the crafts themselves. So whether it's flower pressing or tie dye or puff paint or anything that's sort of in that category of things that we did in the 80s and 90s when we were kids, if you can package that into um, some sort of product that you can sell to this sort of elder millennial generation, I do feel like it could do really well. So those were all the craft themes that I wanted to talk about. And now we're going to talk about specific types of crafts. And of course, these are all going to depend on your skill set, if you have any types of machines or equipment that are needed. Um, so basically, take this all with a grain of salt. Don't feel like you have to go out and make a certain type of craft just because it's trending. What you want to do, again, is to figure out how to add these trends to what you're already doing. The number one thing that I think is going to trend is just inexpensive gift ideas. So this is just a very broad category, and I'm going to give you some specifics here in a minute. But generally, the economy kind of sucks right now, and people are going to probably pull back on their spending a little bit. So if you have products that they can buy for less money, um, I think that those are actually going to do really well. We're thinking stocking stuffers, gifts for people like coworkers, you know, your friends, um, like the cousin you don't see very often, things that are, you know, between five and $10 easy buy. I think those are going to be really important this holiday season because people just don't have the extra income to buy the bigger products. Let's talk about a few of these inexpensive gift ideas. The first one is stickers. Stickers are so hot right now. I don't think they're going anywhere and they are a really easy buy for people, especially if you can really tailor them to your particular niche. It's something that somebody can easily pick up at a craft fair. It doesn't require wrapping. It makes a great stocking stuffer. Stickers also have the possibility to do really well on Etsy, especially if you add free shipping. So you can bump the price of your sticker up just a little bit to account for the cost of a stamp. One great thing about selling stickers with Etsy is that you have the possibility to basically print a trackable stamp and it's like four cents cheaper than an actual stamp is. And this allows Etsy to track your envelope all the way from your studio to where 
wherever it's going. So if you just put a regular stamp on an envelope, there's no way to say it was tracked or received. But with Etsy, you can track letter mail, which I think makes it really easy to sell stickers on Etsy in particular. Another thing I've seen a lot of is charms. I think it is also hearkening back to that 80s and 90s aesthetic. We all had charm bracelets at the time. Um, so there are a lot of people who are selling sort of custom jewelry having to do with charms. And then people are starting to make charms for their accessories. So you may have seen that people who have Stanley water bottles are now putting charms on them. There are also ways to make charms for your Kindle where you um, put it in the plug or your phone, you put it in the plug. I feel like this is sort of the next iteration of the keychain. So many of us have cars that have that remote start. So my keys never leave my purse, right? Um, so charms are another way to sort of share your personality and what you love without having to have a set of keys. Another inexpensive gift idea I am seeing all over Etsy, as well as in a lot of my laser Facebook groups are money holder ornaments. So this is mostly a laser craft, um, but there are so many ideas for being able to give cash to somebody, but make it a little bit more personal by using either an ornament or maybe a gift card. So this is a very easy way for someone to give cash, but to make it feel a little bit more special. And then the next trend, I think we're sort of at the beginning of, and that's patches. So basically there are kind of two ways to make patches. There are sublimation patches and these are good. However, I really think chenille patches are going to be the number one thing that is trending. These are difficult to make yourself without the right machinery. However, you can upload your own designs and have other companies make them. They are a little expensive. However, I really think they're gonna be super popular in the next year or two. Basically, these are another iteration of a sticker. It's another way to show your personality on your clothes, your bags, and more. Next up is embroidery. And I have seen different embroidered projects in basically everywhere I've looked. They are all over Etsy. They were all over Printing United and they are all over the stores right now as well. So the first very, very trendy item is embroidered sweatshirts. So if you go onto Etsy, you can see a huge variety. Everything from simple embroidery with just you know a single word across the front to more complex embroidery, a lot of embroidered ghosts. Let me tell you, those ghosts are everywhere. So basically, if you have the capabilities to do embroidery and you're not making embroidered sweatshirts, I would rethink that. I would take a look at what is trending, make it your own, make it within your niche, and I think it has the possibility to do really well for you. My second idea within the embroidery category is hoops. And obviously hoop embroidery has been around forever. However, it is still really popular, especially if you can niche that down to your niche, right? So let's say you have a shop with plant themed products. You could do some plant themed embroidery with some cute sayings below it. It would be really popular. You could also combine hoop embroidery with all those other themes I was talking about. Mushrooms, ghosts, of course, um, that hyper girly aesthetic, kitschmas. All of these things would lend themselves really well to hoop embroidery as well. And then my third idea in the embroidery category is embroidery kits. So obviously this requires you to be able to know how to create an embroidery pattern. However, this kind of speaks to that kidulting thing that I was talking about before. If you can put together a kit that includes the hoop, the fabric, the thread, the pattern, everything you need to make the project, I think that that could do really well right now. Next up is clay jewelry. So this has been trending for a couple years now and it is just getting bigger. Obviously, you probably need some specialized tools and skills to be able to do this. However, you can make some fairly simple clay jewelry within your niche um, using sort of the minimum number of tools. So if this is something you've been looking at doing, this might be the time to sort of jump on it. Just get those few tools that you need to do it and practice. Of course, make sure that your craft is good enough to sell. However, um, it is one of those things that I do think will continue to trend for the next couple of years. So if you do want to get in on it, I think that this is a really good time. And then we have custom service serving wear. So this is largely laser, but there are also sublimation and even Cricut projects that you can do for this sort of serving wear category. And when I'm talking about this, I really want you to lean into that sort of nostalgia that I've been talking about. So maybe a customer wants a gift for her mom and has her mom's world famous cookie recipe engraved on a cutting board. Or maybe a family wants a custom cookies for Santa tray that they can use over and over um, all throughout their kid's childhood. Making these custom pieces is a little bit harder at markets and craft fairs, but things like this can do really well on Etsy. Another thing I'm seeing a lot of is molded candles. So candles have been popular forever, but I feel like people are sort of taking them to the next level lately. So we have fully molded candles where the candle is actually in some sort of interesting shape. Um, these are really popular right now. I'm seeing them a lot in like home decor magazines and um, places like Anthropology. So those are one option. Another option is still having a poured candle in a jar, but then sort of breaking the fourth wall with other wax 
wax elements on top. So I hear these called dessert candles a lot. So you have the poured candle and then in wax you have something that maybe looks like um, whipped cream and then some wax gingerbread men. It's sort of breaking that top layer of the candle outside of the jar and it can be really, really fun. And then my final craft is UV DTF. So UV DTF is a type of transfer that you can put on hard products. And I have some other videos on it and I can link those down in the description. But basically it allows you to put a permanent, washable, really bright and vivid transfer on hard surfaces. Glass cans, acrylic bookmarks, uh, phone cases, all sorts of things you can use these DTF transfers on. However, it is really expensive and difficult to maintain a UV DTF printer, but you can either upload your own designs and buy from places like Ninja Transfers, or you can buy ready-made transfers from places like Etsy. Okay, so that was like a lot of trends. Let me know what you think about these trends down in the comments. If you found this video helpful or inspiring, I really would appreciate a like. Follow my channel for more crafty content. I'll see you next time.